Hello and uh, welcome back. In this exercise, we're going to work through a problem dealing with conditional probability. So basically what that means is uh, calculating what the probability of something occurring is based on having some piece of information. So I know that this has already happened, uh, so therefore what's the probability that this is going to happen? So it implies that there's uh, some, some dependency. Uh, that one event, uh, the probability of one event occurring is somehow dependent on something else already happening. Uh, and actually, before I even get into the problem, let's just touch on that right away. So the notation for conditional probability is, let's just use generic notation, so outside of the nature of the scope of this problem, what's the probability of A happening given that B has already occurred? Okay, so this this is implying that there's a conditional probability, that there's a, a dependence, that somehow the probability of this occurring is somehow dependent on this occurring. Uh, if these are independent, in other words, there's no dependency whatsoever, then that probability is just whatever is the probability of A occurring. It doesn't matter uh, what B, if B happened or not. So. That's the issue of, of dependence or independence, a little bit of a tangent to this problem, I suppose. So in this exercise, we have uh, here's some data on, on people who have a degree and whether or not they were able to move away from home uh, after having uh, after getting that degree. So we have a survey, 517, that's a typo, 520 people between the ages of 25 and 30. And we asked them, do you have a degree? Do you not? Uh, do you live at home? Do you not? And so here we've got the results of that, in, of that survey. So our first exercise here is to produce a joint probability table. So what that is, I'll here actually I've, I'm gonna produce two tables. Uh, this one here is gonna be our joint probability table. And then right beside it, I'm going to produce a table just of notation. Because I find the first time students are working with this, it's really the notation that is um, most challenging to sort of grasp and wrap your heads around. So the first thing that I'm going to do, we'll calculate this cell here. And so this cell, it's going to contain the probability that if I were to draw somebody at random, so I just randomly pick somebody out of a crowd, what's the probability that that person both has a degree and lives at home? So this is what we call the intersection, right? It's that the, the probability that they satisfy these two characteristics. So the notation for that is the probability uh, that they have a degree and so intersection lives at home, okay? So these first four cells in here, these are all those uh, intersection events. So the probability that they have a degree and they live away from home, down here, this is the probability no degree, intersection lives at home, probability, no degree, intersection, lives away from home. So that's the notation uh, for all of the intersection of these events, which is what the, the, the interior four cells, so these four cells here, are going to contain. Uh, the marginal probabilities, that's what these are going to be here. So this one here, this is just going to be the probability that you have a degree. So it doesn't matter if you're living at home or not. This is just the probability that if I draw somebody at random, what's the probability that they have a degree, regardless of if they live at home or not. Similarly, this is the probability of no degree. Okay, Randomly drawing somebody, probability they don't have a degree. Down here, this is the probability that that individual randomly drawn lives at home. And here, probability that they live away from home. This is just always going to be equal to one uh, probability that I draw somebody out of a crowd and that person uh, is a person. I don't know. It doesn't have any meaning to it. So let's go ahead and uh, calculate these. I'll write out the first couple longhand, but I'm not, I'm not going to write them all out. It'll just be needlessly long. So the first 
we're going to calculate the intersection uh, of having a degree and living at home. So here I want to know that probability having a degree and living at home. Now with the data readily available, uh, the calculation um, is more intuitive, I think, than when we're working with probabilities. Having the data, I can see, well, here's the number of people who meet both of those criteria. There's 109 people who both have a degree and live at home. 109 people out of 520. So 109 people out of 520. So that is going to be equal to 109 out of 520. Uh, point, so let's round it to point 0.21. So there's that probability, 0.21. If I draw somebody just at random, there's a point 0.21 chance, or 21% chance, uh, that that individual will both have a degree uh, and live at home. So moving on, let's go through to the next one. So this is the probability of having a degree and living away from home. And so there's 187 people out of 520, and so that is going to be equal to 187 out of total 520. So let's round that to 0 0.36. 0 0.36. Okay, I'm going to fill in the rest of these joint probabilities, um, hopefully a little bit faster. So now I'm going to go on to the does not have a degree, so this is going to be 89, always divided by that total, 520. So 0.17, and finally, 135 people don't have a degree, but they live away from home out of the 520 that we've spoken to, so 0.26. So those are all of the probabilities of those intersections, of those two events. Now we want to obtain the uh, marginal probability. So those are these totals. So what's the probability that I draw somebody at random and they have uh, they have a degree? So that would be this probability of a degree. So out of out of my 520 people, 296 of them have a degree. So now I calculate 296 divided by 520 and 0.57. So there's my marginal probability here. Moving on to the next. So what's the probability of drawing somebody at random who does not have a degree? 224 out of 520. 0.43. Of course these all add up to 1 as we would expect. I draw somebody at random, they either have a degree or they don't have a degree. So, one. So let's move on to... Where did my cursor go? Oh my gosh. Let's move on to our last row. So now we're going to calculate what's the probability that somebody lives at home. So there's 198 people live at home out of 520.38. And the next one, people who live away, 135 uh, out of 520, so 0.2, that's not right. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the marginals. It's too easy to make mistakes. 322 live at home, divided by 520, so 0.62. So that was 322 divided by... 520. So there's our joint probability table. All of the black probabilities, those are all those intersections. Uh, the probability of any two of these events occurring simultaneously. Uh, all of the blue probabilities, those are our marginal probabilities. The probability of any one of these characteristics uh, occurring. So drawing somebody at random, what's the probability? They live away from home, well, that's 0.62. Okay, so we can go through any of these marginal probabilities uh, and I think interpret them relatively straightforward. 57% chance somebody has a degree, 43% chance somebody doesn't have a degree. Okay, now the more interesting 
calculations. Let me clear up some space. Now we get into calculating conditional probabilities. So the first one says, what is the probability if a randomly selected person says they live at home? What's the probability that they have a degree? So as soon as I have that one piece of information, I can ignore everything else. So this person says they live at home. The only relevant data now is, is this. So here's what we want to calculate as far as the notation goes. What's the probability that this person has a degree given they live at home? Okay, so this is a conditional probability. Conditional on living at home, what's the probability that they have a degree? So having access to the data makes this a heck of a lot easier. There's 109 people of those who live at home, there's 109 of them that have a degree, and there's 198 of them in total. So 109, 109 out of 198 people 109 out of 198. So 0.55. So there's a 55% chance that g given that you're telling me that you live at home, there's a 55% chance that you have a degree. So there's our answer for part C. Now, how, how can we use our joint probability table to get the same result? Well, you may have seen, you know, in your, your textbook or your cheat sheet or formula sheet, whatever, you see that this calculation, this joint, uh, this conditional probability, it's a ratio of two other probabilities. Well, what are those probabilities? Let me just revise our first calculation a little bit without actually changing its value. What if I were to divide both the numerator by 520 and the denominator by 520. So I haven't changed the value, right? These 520s would actually just cancel out, right? So I haven't really changed anything. But now I can see here that this numerator, 109 divided by 520, well, that's exactly what we did in order to get this value down here, right? That 109 divided by 520, that's just our intersection. So that's the probability uh, that you have a degree and you live at home, right? That's what we've already calculated. The denominator now, this is 198 divided by 520. 198 divided by 520, that's precisely, oh, I better get a different color. That's precisely this value here the probability that you live at home. Marginal probability. So if we were to now just substitute in the probabilities that we've already calculated, that intersection is 0.21, that marginal probability is 0.38. If I use my calculator and 0.21 divided by 0.38, look at that, we get 0.55 again, phew. So we get exactly the same answer. So whether you have the data or you just have probabilities, the calculation is relatively straightforward. It's that notation that can sometimes throw people off. So let's go on to the next one. If a randomly selected person says they have a degree, what's the probability that they live at home? So now I'm looking at just this information here. So let's go through it. We'll do this calculation both ways as well, even though it's, uh, it's entirely redundant. I just want to drive this point home. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. I don't want to erase too much down there. My eraser's not as precise as I want it to be. 0.38, okay. So here I want to calculate. What's the probability so, you say you have a degree, so given that you have a degree, what's the probability that you live at home? Okay, so I want, here's those who have a degree and live at home, out of 296. So 109 people out of those 296, 109 divided by 296, 
So 0 0.37, 0 0.37, 0 0.37. So there's a 37% chance, given that you've told me you have a degree, there's a 37% chance that you also live at home. Okay, that's, that's basically what we've calculated. So this means, well, maybe it's better off actually uh, to have a degree, you're more likely to live away from home, but you know, we can, that's an, another issue. Uh, so how can we then use our probabilities to obtain the same result? Well, let's see, if I divide this again by 520, divide this by 520, so now here we have that intersection again, you have a degree and live at home, divided by, this is the probability that you have a degree. And so this is now, uh, let me take, maybe I can use a blue, so here's this value divided by this value. So 0.21 divided by 0.57, and what does that give us? 0.21 divided by 0.57, 0.37, exactly the same value. So okay, uh, there we have our conditional probabilities. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I, th I feel like it's that, that notation that generally throws people off because the calculations themselves uh, aren't really that hard. We're just multiplying and dividing things. Uh, I know that everybody's comfortable doing that. So it's really those formulas and it's that notation uh, that can be tricky. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this has helped. Okay, thanks for watching.